Because I've, you know, I've only known you as 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 a well as a as a as a theater professional. You know, I've known you in musical theater, where you were, of course, singing other people's songs, right. and I've known you as kind of a nightclub performer, where again you did covers. You right. know, uh, so this is this is welcome news, man. That you're spreading your wings even further, man. Hey, brother. At this point, you know how it, how it is. That's what we do. <laughs> Jesus, I wanted to talk to you on social D, brother, because you know we go back. We go back when you were a teenager. We go back like four flats on a Cadillac, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah. I was like, we 19? go way back. <laughs> My people who are joining me on social D theater. I am blessed and fortunate to have with me Mr. Tony Winters. He's an award-winning, uh, they say veteran actor. That just means you've been around a long time. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's, better than, it, it, it's better than the alternative to not have been around for a long time. And that's the thing, brother. I mean, veteran yeah. actor, writer, producer. Uh, you wrote your own screenplay, television, film. A correction, I've written a number of screenplays. Oh, I'm sorry, my brother. <laughs> a number of screenplays. I've produced two of them. Yes, okay. yes, Just yes. to make that clarification. What, what was it, uh, something uh, resisting or getting rid of Tatiana? What you did? <laughs> Retiring. <laughs> you know, in, in hindsight, it's probably not the greatest title in the world, but at the time, it made a lot of sense to me. No, brother, you did a movie, man. Come on now. Well, I thank you. I thank you. Yeah. So that was my thing, man. You know, because again, you know, a lot of times I get the question from young brothers, you know, about entering the business and stuff. And I always refer to them to, to you. I tell them about you and your journey. Oh, hey, come on, man. How long you been? Bless you, man. How long you been doing this? God, uh, since I was, you mean if you count like the college years and the San Diego years? Called call San Diego from the time you went from San Diego to LA. Forty years. Forty years. Yeah, yeah. See, that's sustainability <laughs> right there. So that lets you know this brother has been in hundreds of productions. You know, Hassan, um, I never developed a, a plan B. And, and a lot of people give me a lot of love and a lot of praise for having hung in there for as long as I have, but I really didn't learn to do <laughs> anything else. Yeah. And I never really wanted to do anything else. You know, it has been, I always say, it's been the great love and the great curse of my life. <laughs> uh, hey, but you has made it work, man. That's the whole thing. I, I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah. You know, but there's part of it. Part of the human condition is that we always want more. We're always thirsting for more, especially as artists. You know, um, we, we always want so much more than, than what we have or what we've been given. So um, the, the journey continues. Yeah, many, but, miles to, many miles to travel before we sleep. But when you think about that, though, brother, you just said over 40 years, film, television, writer, producer, screenplays. Don't you, even though there's more you want, don't you have a sense of accomplishment? Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, and sometimes I have to stop and take stock of that, that, you know, that I have lived this artistic walk, you know what I mean? And um, there was, this was my plan when I was 18, and it's still my plan at 58. I'm not scared to say that. There you go. Uh, and, um, and, and like I said, the journey continues. Uh, I never really wanted to do anything else. I never aspired to do anything else. You know, I fell in love with theater around the same time you did and fell in love with the craft and um, just stay, stayed the course. Yeah. So when this COVID-19 hit, brother, where were you at? What were you doing? Uh, well, you know, I saw it coming a few months, I think, before everybody was aware of it because I'm kind of a news junkie. Okay. So, you know, late last year, I was hearing these reports out of China about this strange virus, you know, and I remember I even posted on Facebook, maybe we need to shut down, you know, flights from China into the USA. And it, it was one of those things that I posted, I got about five, <laughs> five likes. Yeah, right, right, right. And a handful of responses. And I said, okay. And I started stockpiling my toilet paper and water. <laughs> yes, I, I, I just felt it coming. And then in, um, 
And then in mid-March, when, you know, the, when it, everything shut down officially, I saw people buying guns, you know, stockpiling toilet paper, you know, lining up in front of supermarkets. And I was, I, I got really afraid. And, and frankly, I was afraid for my mom. Uh, and I jumped on a plane and everybody was telling me, don't get on a plane because that's where you get it. You know, right. I said, okay, I, I got to go see about my mama. So I hopped on a plane, flew to Detroit and I stayed there for a couple of weeks and we just kind of rolled it out together until I saw that all right, folks have not completely lost their minds, okay. you know, and I saw that she was okay and I was okay. And so then I came back and just kind of been, um, you know, going day to day, man, trying to find my new normal uh, right. in the midst of the, the this, this insanity, you know? So once, once this, we come out of this, what's on the horizon for you, brother? Uh, uh, well, I was very lucky. I did a pilot in November. Cool. You no, know, because a lot of pilots got canceled that 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 were shot this that was supposed to be shot this spring. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was lucky to get my pilot in the can. I shot a pilot for Showtime Television called Yellow Jackets, and it stars uh, Christina Ritchie and Chris and uh, Juliet Lewis. Okay. And and and, and follow the bouncing ball here, man. It's kind of a a complicated plot, but it's about a, a girls soccer team from 1996, New Jersey, a girls championship soccer team. Okay. And they're, they're on a flight to a, um, to a tournament and their plane crashes in the Canadian wilderness. And, uh, and, and the survivors of the, of the crash become these cannibalistic warring tribes. Whoa. <laughs> You're like, where the, now where do you fit into all this big? Exactly. Anyway, they're, they're discovered, and they're, they're rescued, I should say, and brought back to civilization. So uh, we, 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 there are two casts. There's the young cast, there's the girls that are high school age, and then there are the grown women, how, they, how, that, how, that, how those years in the wilderness affected them as adults. So we have the teen cast and the young cast. So where I fit in is I play the, the, the principal at their high school. Oh, good. So you see me in, in 1996 and then 25 years later in, in 2019. Oh, so we get to see you at two ages. I like that, <laughs> yeah. that Gemini man that uh, Will yeah. Smith did. You had to de-age me or age me, however you want to look at it. But, okay, yeah. okay. So that's in the can. And um, so I'm really hoping that gets picked up by Showtime. Yes, sir. And, which I guess in a, in, in a, in a perfect world, it would have begun – begun shooting in July in in Vancouver. I think it's is is the buzz. Nice the word on it. Nice, nice, nice. Well, uh who knows? The pilot was shot I, I you know I really can't speak any more about it than that because that's all I know. Okay. And I did an episode of a show called LA's Finest with Jessica Alba and Je and um Bill Union. Okay. And I I play a judge uh second time around as a judge okay uh, but I, i'm not on in either case I've, I've never been on the bench you know you're out of order no I, I i haven't played that judge it was it was a personal scene with uh an actor named uh patrick mcpartland ryan mcpartland i'm sorry okay he's jessica alba's husband and uh, and and we have we work together. I, I shouldn't say more about the plot than that. So, okay. Okay. So yeah. So that's what I got coming up. And other than that, man, I've been doing a lot of self tapes. Uh, I, I'm sure you're familiar that this is the new phenomenon in, in working in television now, uh, where you record your own audition at home. Okay. And send it you know, over the uh, Actors Access website to casting. And that's how a lot of shows have, have I'd say a third of my auditions uh, have, are generally self-tapes. And it's for the Southeast Marketplace, uh, New Orleans, Atlanta, Charleston, you know, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico, even though it's not really the Southwest, I mean the Southeast. And, um, but even local, even local auditions for productions here in Los Angeles uh, are requesting self tapes. And I imagine after Corona is even over, that's going to even become even more the case. 
because right. people don't want you and not going to want people coming into their offices. Now you still have to go through your agent. Your agent still uh, is handling this for you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, they, you, your, your agent procures the audition for you. Yeah. Uh, you get the material. They, you know, they kind of outline what, or, and, and they give you the scenes that they want you to, you know, read in your audition and you self tape at home in front of a blank wall. And I just got, um, this baby right here. This is my kit. Okay. It is a, uh, yeah, I'll just whip it out real quick. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's on a six foot stand. It stands on a six foot stand and this is the ring light, you oh. know, and you place your, your cell phone right here and you record your audition, but you still have to have somebody reading with you. Okay. That was going to be fact, my next question. Yeah. They say, uh, uh some people have their readers on Zoom. Yeah, oh. so that's happening. And and I just got my handy dandy new mic for voiceovers. You have to have a professional mic. There you go. There you go. <laughs> so a lot of what we do is going to start originating at home. You know, um, so you know, you gotta you gotta spend some money to make some money, man. That's how it goes. Yeah. What I'm saying, brother, I was like again. I thought you would be the ideal person because, again, you've been at this, like you said, 40 years. So you've got staying power, brother, staying <laughs> power. So there's a lot of young brothers and sisters coming up. And I tell them, Tony Winters is the one you need to talk to. <laughs> you know, man, that's, that's very kind of you, but I so admire your career. I and mean, we're not blowing smoke up each other's, you know, took us here, but yes. I so admire your career, man, because you get, you get all of these fantastic roles on the stage in the theater is still my first love and I don't get a chance to do it as much as I, I, I would like, but I mean, you're in into the woods and you know, <laughs> uh, gosh, what was it? You just did a, um, a raisin in the sun and, and yeah. I mean, to the production and I said, man, Hassan gets to play really challenging roles, you know, and on the stage and, your career continues, man. And you sing, which is, which hey, is a brother. whole other discipline. Both. We have stuck and stayed, man. Yes, we have. Part of the thing. I tell, I tell them, this one of the things I say, if you stay, it will take care of you. It opens doors for you, you know? It opens you doors. teach. Yeah, I teach too, brother. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I actually am teaching a course called, uh, it's Black History Live on Stage. And my students are required to research an obscure but phenomenal moment in African-American history, and then turn that research and retell it in a performance art piece. That could be spoken word, dance, wow. short film, you know, a song, whatever they create out of their minds. So they're creating these original masterpieces. That's so beautiful, man. At a university back east somewhere, university New England somewhere, right? University of Delaware. Yeah. That's right, it. right. That's Real it. proud of you, man. Hey, hey, brother, I feel the same. Once again, man, this is my spotlight moment on a <laughs> social D theater. And I wanted to make sure that I could have the opportunity to talk to you, my brother. Because I have yeah, nothing you know, but who else, you know who else would be very proud of you, too? Say it again? You know who else would be very proud of you, too? Who's that? Dr. Gaffney. Dr. Gaffney, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who would have known back then that you'd be doing what he's doing, Who teaching knew? at the university level? Who knew? But he planted yeah. that seed in us, brother. Yeah. Yeah, I tell everybody that's my mentor, Dr. G. Same here, man. Same yeah. here. Right. You know, when I came to Los Angeles in the summer of 1984, I I I didn't know anyone. I had no contacts. I had no professional union affiliations, I had nothing. But right. the one thing I had was the belief in myself and the confidence I knew I could act. That was the one, and it has never waned. And that is largely attributable to Dr. Gaffney. You know, Dr. Gaffney, by putting me in so many shows and, and you know, honing my performances and getting good notices and just developing a confidence that you're gonna need up here because competition is fierce, you know. Um, and all that, all those roles lead back to Dr. G, man. He's a beautiful dude. That's powerful right there, brother. Just that, yeah. what, you're, what you're passing on, paying it forward, letting the young brothers and sisters know yeah. you got to work on your craft. You got to hone your craft. You have to be committed to the career and you have to stick and stay. Yeah, because, you know, 
in in even in the best of careers, there are ups and there's downs. Yeah. You know, I'm sure, you know, people like Tom Hanks <laughs> experiences, you know, times when when things change or when things are slow. Oh, well, of course, he has millions of dollars in the bank, so it makes it a little bit different. Yes, it but, does. Uh, we all we all have to learn to suffer the slings and arrows of what we do here, man. Yeah. And um, you yeah. and I have, bro. We we still here. We're still hey, bro, still- again, I appreciate <laughs> you, man. Again, my social D folks all over the world. As you know, this coronavirus has hit the acting community extremely hard across the the globe. Theaters are shut down. You know. I know. See, so it's it's rough, but we're talking to a man, Tony Winters, who had who by his own admission has 40 years over some 100 productions. We're talking film, television. He's a writer, producer, screenplays his own. <laughs> multiple, I have to say that again, you know. And uh, it's just an honor, brother, that you would take out this time share with us on social d theater i ain't got nothing but big love for you man hey man back at you man back at you man all right i hope to see you soon man hey we will brother as soon as this thing uh lets us be free some we'll get together yeah we'll get down there and see um oh gosh you and your group from high school i love those cats man and the name is escaping me i'm sorry to my satisfaction when you saw saw uh my uh 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 my old school thing, when you showed up, brother, that was an honor. Yeah, yeah. But I'm doing gospel right now, man. I'll let you hear some yeah. of that stuff as soon as it's done. All right. All right, brother. Big love. Back at you, man. All Hope right. To talk to you. See you soon, man. Appreciate you, man. Peace. Peace and hair grease. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>